well, obviously wooden boats being, are built of wood, and uh, you know we'll talk about that. The I suppose you divide it into three areas in a boat like Greyhound that we're building there, or most saw and frame carvel construction, which is what we're talking about now, which would be like the backbone, keel, stem, stern, deadwoods, and the framing, which is you know, frames and floors, and then the planking, and then there's all the other things, the deck and the interior and spars and what have you. But starting with the you know, backbone, there's most boats now are built of with a, the backbone of import of hardwoods, sort of tropical hardwoods. There are a few, you know, which is usually if you're buying it in, it's usually a peppy. Um, you can't, there are other options of um, ecky. I've built a boat. We built a boat with an ecky backbone. With the present one we're doing is green heart, but that's because it was available second hand. I mean, it's a great it's a great material. I'm not, and I would use it again given the choice because it's heavy and hard, very worm resistant, takes fastenings well, it's, got, it's not too difficult to work, it's got a lot to offer, um, very difficult to glue, that's a disadvantage. Um, so, but if you, you know, in lighter construction you, or smaller boats you might go for an oak keel, but it's difficult in anything over about 25 foot to get it in a single piece because oak trees don't grow like that, or if they do, they, you know, they, nobody wants to cut them down, that's a good thing too. Um, this, this boat here behind us, I don't know if it's in the film, but that's a Opera Gaffer. It was built in 1904, and that's got an elm keel. A lot of boats of that era have got elm keels, uh, but since the demise of the elms with the Dutch elm disease in the 70s, there is no elm in those sizes available. You can get little bits of elm from Poland or what have you, but that all tends to go for planking now, if it's used for anything at all. So, yeah, I mean, that covers it really. It's hardwoods, thinking of most of them are going to be a peppy now. Moving on to framing, on nearly all fr framing on sawn frame will be oak. Um, that's what we have got a lot of around here. And it's e easily available and uh, reasonably cheap and strong and it's the best thing for the, for the job. That's a, an oak bend there, just sawn out, it's two inches thick. It's sawn out in preparation for a boat we're going to be building next winter. I'm just starting sawing, but you obviously get a futter come out like that. Turn of the bilge, the, the grain run, grain runs through it nice and clear. This this one's actually got a nice narrow sap. The sap's only about three quarter of an inch thick. Sometimes you can get a lot of sap on oak, and you have to be careful about that. Not not using oak sap rocks. So that's a an oak bend. The other. Oh, the other oak, use of oak in framing, of course, is if you're building small boats, dinghies and, and up to you know, 18 footers, that sort of size, you'd be bending the frames in, or bending the timbers in, and that's, again, now you would tend to use, uh, again, years ago, people would be using Canadian rock elm, but you wouldn't now. Um, and you can use ash, but it tends to, it's nice to put in, but it rots out quite fast. It's all right in some very specific Thing. You know, if you've got a boat which isn't going to be used very much, kept in a, kept dry in a boathouse or a shed or something, and it's got to be really light, sort of river skiff type thing, ash is nice. But otherwise, it's again oak, you know, straight grained oak, steams really easily. Yes, you know, it's there, it's available, it's the best material for an awful lot of things in a boat. Um, and you can get, you can get the shapes. That's the nothing, the great thing about it for sawn frame construction. This, I mean, for that sawn frame, as you've seen on the other bits of the film, this is usually you'll have two layers, to, so that the, you know, this one will come along, and then the next one will overlap to here, so that you've got a big overlap, and the grain follows, continues right through the whole cross section of the boat. Um, now, I mean, on, on work boats, you tend to, you can use oak for planking as well, and for things like covering boards and bends, rails. You don't tend to on yachts because it moves so much. It, you know, it sort of um, shrinks to and fro with moisture vari variation. It's very difficult to keep the seams tight, so it's unusual to use oak plank. In work, in work boats, it's fine because they stay wet. It doesn't matter if they leak a little bit through the top sides, and the strength is really useful. Whereas in yachts, even if they're work boat styled yachts, you probably wouldn't want to have oak, oak topside planking. 
you know, some people do, and it, I'm not criticising it, but in general you end up with wide seams, and people don't like wide seams. So that's how it is. So to go on to planking, we use most most workboat planking is large in in Britain at the moment. Um, in the past, it's been other there have been other softwoods used, import imports, pitch part American, you know, longleaf yellow pine or pitch pine for classier boats. And a lot of red pine, which is what we now call red, redwood or red deal, but is Baltic white pine, Penis uh, sylvestris, uh, which is what you, this is just the ordinary pine you buy from a builder's merchant, pretty much, but in slightly better quality. But for now, we're talking about larch, which means European larch. There's an awful lot of Japanese and hybrid larch out there, which isn't of the best quality. And also, a lot of that is what's now got larch disease, so that's been felled out, so you have to be very careful about what larch it is you're buying. Um, part of it is, is down to the species, not whether it's European or Japanese larch, but part of it is also down to where it's grown, grown reasonably slowly, not too many branches and knots, obviously. Um, you can't get knot-free timber, whatever. You, you can't get really knot-free timber, whatever you may be told. But you want to have them you know, small and not too many of them. Yeah, you know, when we're sawing it, it it's it's all just sawn straight through the tree. It's slash sawn, not quarter sawn or boxed heart or any of the other things which you might use for joinery, deck plank, things like, like that. So that the where the the the, um, the alignment of the grain you choose so that the, the quarter sawn sections of it, so i.e. the growth rings going through the plank like that you would use, tend to put into the top sides because they shrink a lot less and the flat sawn bits the first two or three off the side of the tree um, will go into the bottom of the boat because they stay they or in some ways they're e it's easier to bend the flat sawn stuff so you know, things like the just above the garbage and the tuck where you've got a bit of a twist you get it to go in easier so that and also it stays underwater so it stays gets wet, takes up, stays stays like that. You don't have the top side go to and froing with the sunshine, which is the always the problem one of the problems. Um, it's also one of the problems with structural problems as well as look look because if the seams are opening on the inside of the boat, which you know, sort of on the here when you in between the frames, and then you get condensation runs down. If the seams are open the condensation, which is fresh water, runs in and, and rots the corking or possibly the planking, which is a common start of problems on boats. Um, more than that. So, if you can keep the top sides tight, it's, it's always better. So, and one of the reasons, one of the ways to do that is quarter sawing, um, or using the quarter sawn part of the log. Beyond that, when you get into the deck structures, which is cover, you know deck beams, for a start, I suppose you can. There are various options. You can either go hardwood. If you've got a hardwood laid deck of, of a peppy or teak or, or a roco, um, you might use beams of the same thing. Traditionally, beams are of oak, but it's quite hard to get the lengths and it's quite heavy and you know, I'm, I'm quite keen on large beams myself. But, but a peppy beams, if you're having an a peppy deck, it's um, something durable anyway, so that, because they're quite difficult to replace. Um, covering boards, because they're going to be quite what, which is obviously the plank around the edge of the deck, which the stanchions come up through. Um, the deck plank at the edge of the deck, that is, it needs to be something stable. So, although work boats are all oak, oak covering boards, it's a, not a good idea in a yacht uh, because they'll just shake up and leak around the stanchions on the first seam. Um, so, again, a Pepe or a Roco is the standard sort of thing. If you're doing a software, if the whole deck's software, you can have a large covering board, but you're not going to really keep it tight, whatever you may think. <laughs> okay, so if you're thinking about the knees and, and various knees and sort of angle brackets, which you might call them, that hold various parts of the boat together, again, traditionally they'll be oak. Um, bends like this, slightly tighter bend, maybe where a branch has come out of the side of the tree and you cut across it so you get a right angle. Um, that's, I don't know if I've got some small leaves on the 
of a out of a tree, and you'd get the breast hook of a dinghy out of that. You see, so you get the the strength of the grain from the timber. And uh, you know, on a bigger boat, you use a, it's kind of a bigger tree and cut thicker. But it's not. Well, people say it's not very easy to find the knees. It, it, it's it's true to an extent. So you, there are various other options. In big boat work, it tends to be steel fabrications are the, are the other option. They've got a lot to offer it. I mean, it's, and they have been traditionally as well. Hanging knees in schooners and that kind of thing for 150 years have been steel or iron. Or, you know, blacksmith work. And this, yeah, they're very good. Big, big oak knees do tend to, in some ways, are of limited value. You know, by the time you've got them in and fitted, they start shrinking away off the deck beam and the clamp or covering board or wherever you're attaching it, to, whatever it is you're attaching to. And you end up with a gap, even if it's only a quarter of an inch. And if you're trying to stop the boat moving around, by the time that's taken up, the boat's moved a long way anyway. So I'm quite keen on, on uh, metal knees. Uh, the other option for yacht type work is laminated knees, of course, which is, um, or plywood decks, which is a, a great way of, of um, disposing of nearly all your, well, obviously all your lodging knees, rather than lodging knees being horizontal ones, rather than hanging knees, which are vertical. vertical the, the hanging knees can be, most modern construction, you'll have some structural bulkheads for various reasons of, of um, structure and buoyancy requirements. So the, those bulkheads take the place of most of the hanging knees. And if you have a plywood deck, you can that takes the place of all the lodging knees. But if you don't want to ply with deck, you do need some. Uh, you can go for diagonal deck strapping, which is what we're doing on Greyhound. You, you probably see it. Um, and you know, on bigger vessels, the hull hull strap, diagonal hull strapping, metal strapping in the hull takes the place of quite a lot of knee. Uh, otherwise, you can you can laminate knees, of course, for small boat work. You know, little strips of whatever it is, oak or you know, whatever timber you're using. Um, I haven't got any of the gigs in, gigs in here because they've all got laminated knees in. But, um, no, I haven't got any here. Or, or again, in small boat work, or dinghies and that kind of stuff, people halve their knees and things, but yeah, they're not really that much use. You're better off to laminate. Or halve them and then laminate a little strip across the top of them, that's quite good. But I mean, it's easy enough really to get deep, proper grown knees. And for dinghy work, it's, it's the best thing you can have. So, that's what I think. <laughs>